Hi everyone. Okay. Welcome to Topic Tackle Tuesday. I'm really excited to see you. So we're waiting on Julio for a few minutes, but today we're talking about using your art to sell your art. And what does that really mean? Well, that means you can't really just use anything to start advertising. You can't use any kind of stock pictures. You can't just use any kind of copy and paste um, copy. It's got to really be on brand. So Julio's here now. Why don't you tell us a little bit more about the topic today as we get going? And we've actually seen, um, if you want to talk about who we saw actually say this and all of that. Sure. Give me one second to get set up here. I need my glasses. Hi, Susan. Okay, hey, so you're going to pull it up. Susan. So let me get my glasses on. What we kind of took this, and Julio's going to go into a little bit more depth with this. What we kind of took this with our brand is that we kind of have to put in the work when it comes <laughs> to branding, right? We kind of have to grab images that are truly ours. That means our logos, lots of different variations. That means that we need to go out and have photo shoots of us, or like you've seen us use the cartoon um, images and things, which saves us a lot of time. It means that we've got to really be on brand, using our art to sell our art. So you might have seen um, books come out, right? When you're selling your book or something, people use images of themselves on the books. They don't just use any old stock image. And that makes a lot of sense for a book, right? But in our marketing businesses, in our e-commerce businesses, in our service businesses, sometimes we'll default to the stock photo. And there, it is okay to use stock photos every once in a while. But if you're using that as the easy way out and you're putting it on like your webinar advertisement, um, Facebook ads on the front of your website and instead of a headshot, like all these different things, they're, they're kind of rookie mistakes that we've seen done that can lead to feeling less personal, can lead to people feeling like you're not really that professional in your job. So <clears throat> that is true if you are, um, if you have a brand that is about you as the person, which most of the people that are going to be watching, uh, that is the case. However, that is um, not necessarily the case depending on what your brand is. For example, if you are a HubSpot or something like that, oh, right? Okay. Well, you know, so like as a HubSpot, you don't necessarily, I mean, it's still better to have some sort of um, face recognition. So if you are somebody who, if you're like doing a webinar in your HubSpot, for example, you would want somebody uh, whoever's going to be hosting the webinar to be the one that's on camera giving tips and tricks and things like that. Um, but generally speaking, um, the idea behind it is even if you do something with stock photos, you got to make sure that it's pretty, right? Mm -hmm. um, when I say, and it's so to kind of go off what Darren was saying, um, it was Russell Brunson. I was listening to one of his uh, podcasts earlier this week. I think it was on Monday or something. Um, or last week. Um, and basically, he, he used that exact phrase. You have to make art to sell your art. Uh, and he was giving the example of how he spent, um, I think he said something like 18 hours of filming, uh, you know, B-roll footage. He spent tons of money getting trailers and things like that full of, of video equipment to, um, to take pictures and videos and all this other stuff. And storyboarding and he has a videographer and a guy that does his audio and blah 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 you know like i mean when you get to that sort of level you can afford to to you know go all out mm. um, but his entire point was that it's short-term thinking to um to just put a random stock image that either you got for free or you bought for you know five dollars or something and put it on an ebook or put it on your website or whatever and just say like there it is right mm -hmm. it needs some finessing it needs and it, it could be something as simple as going to like canva which we use all the time yeah right and getting that stock image and instead adding a layer um like of a, like a black square and then making that black square like half the opacity Right. Yep. And then it adds like a filter effect, you know, like it, it's essentially Instagramming up your business or Instagramming up your um, your accounts. You want it to look pretty. So that way. People are more intrigued by the image and um, it's just one of those more long term solutions to what is normally an, an issue. 
Right. So that's the difference between the personal brand and more of like the corporate brand. HubSpot mm -hmm. versus, you know, what we do. Right. We would not use stock photography all over the place. In fact, I think we use stock photography very, very minimally. But we did when we first started. We did. And um, I mean, looking back on it, looking because we still have access, obviously, to those photos. We still have them. Um, you know, you can. It's a pretty stark difference uh, seeing a picture of you know Darian right by a fence. You know, doing this. <laughs> that way, we can add something later. You know, to to above her hand. But it's a big difference seeing what camera quality. Um, you know, made the difference to see how actually planning shots out to mm -hmm. see, you know, like, hey, we need to film early in the morning or late at night, or hey, we need to um, make sure that we're not casting these shadows, or we need to make sure that the, we have grid lines on the camera so I can make sure that when I'm taking the shot, it's level and mm -hmm. not like a skew. Um, and what you're talking about check out the is... background, and you know, like there's so much more to it. Yeah, and what you're talking about is production value. Right, so adding production value, exactly. Yeah, so... And production value does not not necessarily mean that you have to have the most expensive equipment, the most state-of-the-art everything. It just means that you need to pay attention to what you have access to. Yeah. Right? Do not take the easy way. Do not take the cheapest way. If you can level up your business and use art to sell your art right, level up the production value, which is the perceived value for your customers, then that's going to make conversions that much better. Mm -hmm. It's going to be easier for you to feel like a bigger business, to act like a bigger business, to show your customers that you're worth their time. And right. now if you have an e-commerce business um, and you've been running it for any amount of time, you've heard the advice that your product photos have to be on point. Right. Right. They have to be bright. They have to be clear. No pixels at all. Very, very high quality. Why is that? Because you're going up against... Like Julio said, you're going up against people who've got tons of money and tons of production value and like the, I don't know, the Tiffany's, that they've got all their resources, they can take great photographs. If you're going to be selling your own jewelry in comparison as a competitor, you better have some really good photographs. Sure. And, it, you know, it's, you can easily DIY, DIY this. You know, mm -hmm. it does not, you don't have to spend thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. Um, I mean, when we... A while back, what we did was take some of the paintings that we had around the house that we had bought from like Amazon for you know thirty dollars, forty dollars, and we added towels to the um, the back of them to, mm -hmm. in order to take away some of the echo of the room. You know, I mean, versus trying to get some like Dino mat or something like that, which it takes away some of the the base and echo, which would have costed us an arm and a leg to fill up an entire room, right? Um, you also have the idea of like most people have their, you know, a, a smartphone. Mm -hmm. So you have the ability to take really awesome uh, photos, portrait effects, things like that, especially if you have some of the newer phones, um, high megapixels. I mean, everything is, is there. It requires. So when we say production value, most people think like, oh, OK, so you want me to buy a $3,000 MacBook. You want me to buy a you know, $2,000 camera with a $2,000 lens and and that's not really what you need to do. I mean, it can make life easier, obviously. So if you're just trying to throw money at, at your problems, okay. But um, the the biggest part of it, at least from my experience, is planning. If, uh, you know, again, you have your smartphone, cool. You can create, go on YouTube, create a light box for your product mm -hmm. and, you know, spend 15, 20 bucks or go on Amazon, buy a light box for your product, spend $40 or $50 have it already there now you just have to have like a little display or some flowers or something that that i don't know or you can just have it as the white box to where you can put your your jewelry or whatever it is that you're selling you know you can do the same thing with a white backdrop mm -hmm. we bought that from from amazon as well i mean these are all things that are not necessarily they're not free per se but they are relatively inexpensive um and it's just a small investment which will make a big difference now, in the same token, um, of, as far as art to sell your art, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, what you really want to also do is make sure your website's on point. I know we kind of talked about this um, previously, but the website is effectively like the cover of your book, right? Mm -hmm. And the you know the old adage is you don't judge a book by its cover, but the reality is that the vast majority of us do. Yeah. You know, same thing with movies, whatever. You know, there's a reason why they take they put so much effort into 
movie posters and, and trailers and things like that because we do we do judge it. We do judge our intent and our interest and in how interested we are. And for many of us that have limited, um, I won't even necessarily say limited funds, but limited funds for particular items that aren't necessities mm -hmm. like movies or pot potentially jewelry, things like that, or just random t-shirts that I like online or whatever, right? Um, I need to, or I want to see that what I'm buying makes sense and that it's really high quality, right? So I, and you need the website to be up there too. You know, yeah. you, you, it needs that. And that's part of the reason why I suggest, especially for many of you to try out like Shopify or something like that. I know the, one of the biggest things out there is that you should be, um, you should be paying spending money and, and, and yeah, exactly. And paying for somebody to do it for you. And that's all fine and dandy, but that's the prevalent advice we've seen out there. Right. Yeah. But most of the time, unless you're just willing to spend, you know, uh, five thousand ten thousand dollars on a designer in my experience it just hasn't really panned out most of it looks like um websites i would have seen in like the early 2000s or something like that you know like the designs just aren't there they don't quite know what they're doing yet they you know they're still learning too so and that's not every designer of but course. the ones who are going to be in your price range right if you want to spend fifteen hundred dollars and that sounds like a lot that's like the super minimum that's that's the learning person they right. just started their website design business and now yeah. you're paying them fifteen hundred dollars to set it up and that's what hulu means in our experience right that doesn't work out if you're yeah. not willing to pay like ten thousand dollars for a really great website or at the minimum five thousand dollars for a great designer to set you up it's just not going to turn out very well and so what we advise people to do is go instead to places like shopify who is now what it's, it's like second, second biggest e-commerce platform out there mm -hmm. only under Amazon officially right. past eBay and Amazon is ago. about to open up their own marketing department now too right yeah so like there are lots of options out there that are really stellar are gonna give you really great results and not require you to have to hand over a whole lot of money for it yeah exactly and that's what I mean by sell your art use your art to sell your art is production value really does matter putting mm -hmm. the time and thought into your marketing as much thought into marketing as you did product development and research and development is going to be really really important moving forward yeah. it's going to be really really important to help you come across to your customers that not only are the things that you say in your copy about your products true but you're professional business and you know what you're doing yeah you need to put just as much effort if not more effort into your marketing um, than the product itself. Mm -hmm. I know that you know a lot of you out there don't like that idea because you you are product people, right? You I like to sell this or make this. I don't necessarily like to sell this, but the problem is that without the sales, you can no longer make it, mm -hmm. right? Or it's just a hobby. In which case, then fine. You know, no, you don't have to make money off your hobby. As a matter of fact, if you make money off your hobby, it becomes a job. You know, and then that's when it becomes a legit business and then that's when you now have to start thinking about ads and how does this work and how does that work and you know mm -hmm. and it was a tough pill at first for me to swallow in particular because I was one of those people where when we had our business um, before our soap and candle business you know in a past life I just loved making soap and candles I loved how they smelled I just wanted people to know how great they were and so I I wouldn't put that much effort into like a marketing strategy. And honestly, I didn't know much at the time about what a marketing strategy looked like. And mm -hmm. when I started to figure it out, it did feel kind of icky because I'd never been exposed to that before. And my initial thought were all the stigmas that surrounded sales and marketing. Yeah. And it was all negative stuff because that's what we all hear growing up is like, especially with our mindset and our hangups, like money is bad and, and people who want money are bad. And so, you know, all companies are out to get you and all of those kind of things. But the longer I was in it, the more people I worked with who were in the same environment and successful, the more I realized like there's just a right way to do this. There's a change of mindset that has to occur when you own a business that you still are helping people, but you have to get to them in a certain way. You have to be able to connect with them in a certain way. And so it is, it's a different way of doing business than when we start out, we think it will be. Oh yeah. I mean, and and as far as the idea of the mindset thing, I mean, you can see that just whenever you look at comments on, on pretty much anything, really. 
that's a business. I mean, I can't tell you for my, myself, I'm a big fan of like MMA. So like, I can't tell you the amount of times I've been looking through whatever, you know, whether that's Reddit or, um, just, you know, uh, news sites and the comments below is talking about the UFC business. And I may not necessarily agree with everything they do or whatever, but my point to that is they don't seem to understand that this is a business. Mm -hmm. So they're just like, Oh, they made, you know, uh, let's just say they made for ease of numbers. Ten million dollars in this for this fight in revenue, and they're like, "Yeah, the fighter should make nine million dollars out of that." And it's like, "Well, at what point do they pay their their employees, the the the, the arena itself, rent, airfare, travel? Food you know, like for the food, arena. like you know, there's so many the other variables marketing. behind it. Exactly. Now, I'm not, you know, obviously, I'm not saying that the fighter should be paid chump change either, but there is a difference there. Right? There's an understanding that needs to occur that. Like, starting a business, one of the big things for me was I just wanted a little bit more freedom and a little bit more money to spend, yeah. right? And I think that's why a lot of us start a business is because we just need a little extra in our pockets. But the reality, as you grow as a business, is that that money is not yours. Yeah. That money belongs to the business. And that money needs to go right back into the business in order to continue growing the business. Right. Like Julia said, that's not to say that you don't get paid. But again, a mindset shift needs to occur in that now you are a CEO. Mm -hmm. And so your first thoughts need to be about the people that you employ or contract out. They need to be about the resources that you have and how to continue developing and evolving in order to stay competitive and all of the things that you create that serve your customers and what your customers need from you. You come towards the bottom of those priorities. Mm -hmm. And customers, like those comments, like, in that person's mind who made that comment that, you know, the fighters need to get paid, their their heart's in the right place. Right. Right. They're, they want the fighters to get what they deserve. And exactly. like Julio said, that's not to say that there are not issues in MMA and whatever and that those fighters, you know, already are paid enough. Like, they probably aren't. But, sure. But the point is, like, they're coming from it um, in the wrong way. They're not coming from it from a business standpoint. There are things that need to occur in the business to make those fighters feel like they are getting what they deserve, but mm -hmm. there are also other employees that are behind the scenes that also need to be paid. They also have families. They also have bills. Sure, exactly. And in order for the UFC to continue to grow, for example, um, they still have to be able to put money into you know um, fight promotions and mm -hmm. online marketing and website right. development and all of those different things that still help the UFC remain relevant and competitive in the space, which enables them to make more money, which enables them to pay the fighters and their other employees. Oh, it looks like our connection got cut. So let us know if you can still see us. Um, it looks like we're still live. Okay, oh, I think it's go. coming back. Okay, there we go. So let us know if you can still see us and still hear us. Um, and what questions do you have regarding this? On Friday, we're going to go through our Q&A. Mm -hmm. Same time, same place, 9 a.m. Hawaii time, whatever time it is where you're from. Let us know, Eastern, Central, Pacific, London. Um, and we're going to answer a lot of questions one particular one that we saw in our public group from um, Regine. And it has to do with launching her products and getting in touch with her people who might have cooled off a little bit. You right. know, they might need to be rewarmed. So if you're having some issues with that, we wanna address that on the Friday Q&A. We wanna tell you our thoughts on launching, some things that we've been doing, and we wanna help you diagnose different things with your brand, um, especially how to rewarm, which we see as a very common thing that people need to do, is you've got this email list you've been building for a while, but you haven't talked to them in a while. So how do you start to sell to them without them just being jarred by the fact that you're like, hey, it's me, buy my thing. Right, right. exactly. Um, but yeah, I think that pretty much covers the idea behind using art to sell your art. Um, questions, comments, please feel free to leave them and we will um, answer them as best we can. And uh, from there, I think we'll talk to you on, well, I'll see you tomorrow because I'm going to do a Facebook uh, or I'm going to post a, a, an ad, ad. Yeah, an ad reaction. But besides that, I'll see you Friday. Yeah. Let us know if you like those ad reactions, by the way. We think they're pretty helpful in terms of telling you what kind of copy works, what kind of creatives work in ad, yeah. and what doesn't. And I also wanted to just kind of uh, drop something here. I see that Peggy joined, so she watched part, part of this or all of this. She actually won one of our competitions last week and got a 30-minute coaching call. Mm -hmm. So I want to let you know to make sure to engage. If you feel compelled to engage, if you have an answer to one of our questions or anything, or you just want to say, hey, 
um, make sure you're doing that often because we want to start rewarding people who are you know, participating in our different activities and coming in and asking questions and learning actively. That's really what we want is we want active learners who are willing to start making those different changes that are required for business growth. Exactly. So, boom. Boom. Okay. So then we will see you. Julio will see you tomorrow. I, Julio, and I will see you on Friday for the Q&A. Yep. Same time, same place. And again, drop all questions and comments. We'll see you then. All righty, guys. See you later. Have a good one. Bye. Bye-bye.